Mike, I really appreciate it. Dean, thank you as well. It's great to be here. That's uh, very impressive facilities you guys have here at Chapman. You should all be very, very pleased and proud. It's uh, as Marcy and I, my wife, is here with us today. And as the father of three kids who all love film, um, my my interest has been sparked. So <laughs> that's good. Um, what I thought I'd do first is. First of all, how many of you have actually gone and seen an IMAX movie at some point? In the, okay, wow, so pretty much everyone. And how many of you have actually seen a Hollywood IMAX movie as opposed to a, a nature movie? Okay, so most of you. Good. That means, that means we're probably doing okay. Um, what I thought I'd do is, is walk you through um, a, a brief presentation on IMAX. Let's call it IMAX 101. It's going to have definitely a business focus. Um, we are a publicly traded company. And, and it is, as I was saying earlier today, um, the sort of thesis for everything that I do, yikes, the thesis for everything I do is that it's show business. Those two words are, um, are linked in such a, 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 an important way. You can't have showmanship without the business aspect, and you can't have business without showmanship. And if there's anything that I hope I impart on you today, um, it's the importance of linking the two of them. I recognize completely that on one hand, there's a, especially, um, you know, in, a, in a, perhaps an idealistic point of view, um, you want to just be creatively focused. And then there are other people who are way too business focused. Uh, I think that finding that proper balance is a recipe for success in the movie industry or the television industry and entertainment. And I'm going to have definitely some focus on entertainment, excuse me, on, uh, on finance, but I think you'll also see that um, there's a creativity to it. So um, let's let's get started. So this is what most people associate with IMAX. Whales, bears, seals, mountains, space, etc. And we did that for a long time. Uh, we made movies about every nature subject you could possibly imagine. We not only ran out of them, but we ran out of what was at the time our core business, which was selling projection systems. We sold them to pretty much every cool museum, science center, zoo, or aquarium you could possibly come up with. And so to grow our business, we decided that we had to start selling them to multiplexes. And the only way you could sell them to multiplexes was if you had content that worked in a multiplex. No one wants to go to the Irvine Spectrum on a Saturday night at 10 o'clock and watch a 40-minute movie about science. But they would like to go to a, the Irvine Spectrum and watch a two-hour movie, whether it was Avatar, which is two and a half hours, or, or Alice in Wonderland. So we created something called DMR. And in 2002, we released our first DMR film, which was a seven-year-old version of Apollo 13. And it caught some people's attention. In 2003, we released our first day and date film, which was Matrix Revolutions. And that came out in IMAX the same day as it came out in regular theaters. And that was the point when things started changing for us. Um, I, I think that recognizing how lucky you are, and I consider myself very lucky to, to be in the industry that I'm in, one of the things that you try and be is, is you know, sort of have a little bit of a humility to it, but that was the, the point in our business. When we went from being, you know those in what's hot and what's not lists? We were on a lot of what's not lists, and after we released Matrix Revolutions, we all of a sudden started being on the what's hot list. Maybe not completely, but people started paying attention to us a little bit more. And that was because we were able to deliver a product that they couldn't get anywhere else. The best version of every movie that we release. And, and that sounds, um, that's certainly my opinion, but I think most filmmakers will tell you that when they get involved with IMAX, the reason they do so isn't because of how many tickets they can sell, but they do because they think it's the best presentation in all of cinema. And it's really important that at the end of the day, the product that you're producing whether it's a movie or a projection system or a sound system, is the highest quality that you can deliver within the business parameters that you've set. And I think that we've been able to accomplish that. And, and having it also be something that people can get the same day that they can go see it in a regular theater, but just have the cooler experience, I think, work to our advantage. So that's where we were. Um, and where are we now and where are we headed? So our business has changed fundamentally in the last two, three years. And it's really because of the convergence of digital technology, our projection systems now, all of the new projection systems that we're installing are digitally based. So unfortunately for film lovers, of which I'm one, 
Um, there's an economic reality that it's just a lot less expensive to release a movie digitally than it is to release a movie in film. So we have lots of digital theaters now. Uh, in fact, we, it took us 40 years to have 200 IMAX screens. In the last three years, we're now over 400. So it took us three years to more than double what it took us 40 years to generate. We now have about 440 IMAX screens. We also changed our, our, uh, our business model. We used to go to people and sell them theaters for a pretty significant amount of money up front. And they would then um, own the theater and give us a very small amount of recurring revenue going forward. And that was because we pretty much had a chicken and the egg issue. We couldn't sell enough theaters because we didn't have enough movies. We didn't have enough movies because we didn't have enough theaters. So because of the digital technology, because of our conversion of Hollywood films into DMR, and because we changed our, our, our revenue model where we now give exhibitors like Regal, like AMC, et cetera, the IMAX projection system, they in return give us the real estate, the biggest screen in every complex that we go into. And that's a condition of our deal. We must be the biggest screen. And we now take a, a bigger piece of the action of the box office. And we're able to do that because we have more movies. And we have more movies because we have a great product. People like to see films in IMAX. Filmmakers like to put their movies in IMAX. So those three things in the middle, increased film supply, network growth, long-term profitability, have changed our business. There are three things that drive everything that we do. Create key relationships, determine which films fit the IMAX model, and manage the film cycle. We're in business now with every studio. There's one missing. I won't tell you what it is, but I will tell you that we're talking with them for the first time uh, about an about a, um, a, a overall relationship. Uh, we're not there yet, but we're getting close. So we pretty much um, have, a, have a very wide berth of, of studio customers, and they like to give us their biggest and best tentpole movies, which is precisely what we like to show and what we think most moviegoers like to see. These, however, are our secret sauce. Filmmakers drive everything that we do. There are about 20 big filmmakers in Hollywood. And when they walk into a studio executive's office, they pretty much get whatever they want. And fortunately for us, we're on their that's what I want list. They want their movies to be shown in IMAX. And what I'm very proud of is we've delivered a user-friendly way of interacting with them. IMAX used to be a little bit difficult to deal with. We weren't particularly user-friendly. We used to say to people, you have to do it our way. It costs more money. It's going to take a lot longer, but it's worth it. And most of the studio executives said, it sounds good, it looks good, but we really can't do it because it's just too inconvenient and too expensive, and it's a different language. So we learned to adapt to what they needed. And as a result, business started flowing our way. And so what I'm the most proud of is that when we get in business with someone, they tend to come back for more. So Chris Nolan, we did Batman Begins, we did The Dark Knight, and now we're doing this July Inception. James Cameron, he made two documentary movies in IMAX. Now he did Avatar, which has been incredibly successful. He's coming back for more. Steven Spielberg, we did Eagle Eye, Transformers 1, Transformers 2, and we will do more with him. J.J. Abrams, we did our first movie, Star Trek, with him. We're doing the next one. Uh, John Lasseter, we're, we're finally in business with Pixar. We're doing Toy Story 3 this June, which I can't wait. Jeffrey Katzenberg, we do every one of DreamWorks Animation's movies. Robert Zemeckis, Polar Express, Beowulf, and A Christmas Carol, and we'll do his next movie. David Heyman is the producer of Harry Potter. We've done Harry Potter 3, 4, 5, and 6. And this November, we're doing Harry Potter 7A, and in July, we're doing, July of 2011, we're doing the finale, Harry Potter 7B. Michael Bay, I told you about Transformers. And Tim Burton, we did Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and just last weekend, we did Alice in Wonderland. So again, people seem to have a decent experience, and they're coming back from